Welcome to this Tax Justice Network podcast. I'm Naomi Fowler from the Tax Justice Network's monthly podcast, The Taxcast. I'm going to speak to the Tax Justice Network's Andres Nobel about some of the findings of the 2020 Financial Secrecy Index and its relevance for Latin America. How would you summarise the Financial Secrecy Index 2020 results for Latin America? What does it tell us about the region? The Financial Secrecy Index now covers 16 jurisdictions in Latin America, without considering most of the British jurisdictions in the Caribbean. In terms of the secrecy score, Latin America is very close to the global average, about 60 out of 100, where 100 would be complete secrecy and zero would be total transparency. In terms of its global scale weight, which analyzes the value of financial services offered to non-residents, Latin America is not a great financial center for non-residents compared to other regions. In terms of its secrecy score, which analyzes the transparency legal framework of Latin America, it depends on different topics. Latin America is quite secretive when it comes to country by country reporting, which relates to multinationals information about where they do operations and is a tool to fight against tax abuse by multinationals. Also, Latin America is quite secretive in terms of public availability of online information, especially about ownership information and companies' accounts. Now, in two respects, Latin America has some disparity. In terms of beneficial ownership information, we are seeing some leadership in the region and many more countries are now starting to have beneficial ownership registration laws. And we have Ecuador, which is now a global leader in terms of transparency whereas other countries in the region do not even have complete legal ownership registration. The other aspect where there is some disparity is about automatic exchange of banking information. Almost half of the countries covered in Latin America are now already exchanging information automatically under the OECD's common reporting standard. But almost half of the, I mean, the other half, on the contrary, haven't even committed to implement this automatic exchange of information. And that means that these countries will not get any information, so it will not be possible to identify any case of tax evasion or money laundering or corruption by the elites of these countries that have foreign bank accounts. And at the same time, these countries might become secret jurisdictions themselves if non-residents start going to these countries to set up bank accounts, knowing that their information will not be reported anywhere else. One good story is the leadership of Latin America in tackling corruption and money laundering by signing the Punta del Este Declaration. Can you explain what this is and why it was an important development? Among the many loopholes of the OECD's common reporting standard for the automatic exchange of banking information, one of them refers to the use of information. Unfortunately, the OECD and the legal framework imposed and established by the OECD to exchange information automatically, imposes a restriction on the use of the received information. In principle, the information that a country receives about foreign bank accounts can only be used for tax purposes. One of the leadership that is now shown by Latin America has been after the signing of the Punta del Este Declaration, which, even though it's a non-binding declaration, at least shows the intent and the intention of countries to start using information received automatically, not only for tax purposes, but also to tackle money laundering and corruption. And this is very relevant because there might be cases of corruption or money laundering where no taxes are being evaded. So the information might not be relevant for taxes, but could still reveal a lot about corruption or money laundering taking place. That's why it's very important for countries not only to use this information to tackle these other types of illicit financial flows, but also to authorize other countries to do the same so that all countries will eventually be able to use information for whatever they seem appropriate and fit, not only for tax, but also for other types of illicit financial flows. Ecuador has shown the most leadership of the region, which is interesting, with a good secrecy score and an outstanding beneficial ownership registration law. So that's a registry of the real owner of a company. It's the country with the best online registry in the index, even though it's pretty hard to use. 
This would have been due to the actions of the previous government rather than the current one, which does make you wonder what will happen with the more recent government, with the vice president found to be using offshore companies. Ecuador's beneficial ownership registration laws is really among the best, not only in the region of Latin America, but also when compared to the whole world. The great thing about Ecuador's beneficial ownership registration law is that it covers companies, partnerships, and some trusts. And specifically in the case of companies, it has the lowest possible threshold. Whereas many countries based on the Financial Action Task Force recommendations use very high thresholds, requiring anyone with more than 25% of the capital of a company to be identified as a beneficial owner. In Ecuador, any person holding at least one share has to be identified as a beneficial owner. That means that 100% of the capital of a company will be identified and it should be possible to know who is behind it, who are the individuals who are ultimately controlling or owning those shares in a company. Now, the other great thing about Ecuador is that compared to the region, it is the only jurisdiction in Latin America that is offering this information online to be publicly accessible, even for free. Of course, this platform is not as great as maybe that of Denmark or the UK, and it takes some time to find information and you have to be going from one company to the find who the beneficial owner is. But the great thing is that the information is actually there. And compared to other countries, the regulations here having such low thresholds do cover many more individuals as beneficial owners. And also importantly, it covers trusts, which are a type of legal vehicle, usually referred to as a legal arrangement, which enjoys a lot of secrecy in most countries where they don't even need to be registered. Uruguay shows the continent how disobedience towards rules set by the OECD actually enables countering tax abuse. Can you explain this? This is what they call robust local filing, which has gone down in many countries because the OECD itself has restricted its use. Why does robust local filing matter so much? One of the greatest tools to tackle tax avoidance and tax abuse by multinationals is the country by country reporting. This report contains data about multinationals and where they have operations in every country. And in those countries, how many employees they have, how much taxes they pay, what is their income, how many assets they have. And this will give a pretty good big picture of a company to understand if any tax abuse is taking place. This would be the case, for instance, if a company seems to have a lot of income in one place, but no employees and no taxes being paid, whereas the same company might have many employees and many assets in another country, but then no declared income, and of course, also no taxes being paid. This report, which has been also developed and proposed by the Tax Justice Network for many years now, was going to be and, and should be public just because it doesn't contain any confidential information, especially considering that some countries in some sectors in, in Europe, including the banking sector and the extractives, already have to publish this information. And some companies are even willing to publish this information themselves. Now, unfortunately, the OECD imposes a very cumbersome process to obtain this country by country report automatically whereas it is not always guaranteed that a country will get that information, especially if they don't have enough exchange of information treaties with other countries. Now, the great thing is that some countries have not followed the OECD requirements and are implementing what we call a robust local filing. And that means that countries will say, I either get the country by country report of a relevant multinational that has operations in my country, automatically from other countries. And if I cannot get that for whatever reason, then I will ask this country by country report from a local subsidiary of a multinational that operates in my country. The OECD restricts this and only allows it under very limited circumstances and also limits the cases and the uses that an authority might give to this information. The good thing about Uruguay in, in the region, only the only country in the region so far, is that they're not really following the OECD requirements and they have what we call this robust local filing because they will ensure that either they get the country by country report from abroad via automatic exchange and if they cannot do that regardless of the reason 
then they will ask a local subsidiary to file this information. This way, Uruguay authorities will ensure access to this very relevant tool to tackle tax abuse by multinationals. Unfortunately, though, no country in Latin America is requiring the country by country report to be published so that civil society organizations and journalists can also access this very relevant data. Let's talk about Panama. How has scandal hit Panama changed? Panama hasn't changed substantially in terms of transparency. While it has new regulations on beneficial ownership, it still doesn't ensure beneficial ownership to be registered with a government authority. In addition, Panama still has problems with bearer shares. Where Panama has indeed changed and improved is about automatic exchange of banking information. Panama has finally signed the Multilateral Competent Authority Agreement, the MCAA, to join the international framework and standard to exchange information automatically and will exchange information with many countries, unlike others in the region, which either haven't joined the CRS yet or who have chosen voluntary secrecy, where they would send information to other countries but receive it from no one. Panama, in contrast, will be both sending and receiving information from other countries about bank account information. However, Panama's tax regime, especially for individuals, is still very great incentives, especially when coupled by the golden visas offered by Panama. So there is still a lot for Panama to improve in terms of transparency. Is it the case that some of the most popular jurisdictions, the Latin American elites and businesses are still the Caymans, Bahamas, Miami? How can Latin American countries act to slow down that kind of flow of money and registration of assets? The Financial Secrecy Index is a ranking of the worst offenders in terms of global financial secrecy. And that means jurisdictions offering secrecy, especially for non-residents. Many countries are offering this, and that is a big problem for Latin American countries because of all the resources they lose to that, the capital flight, and all the tax revenues that are lost that are so needed to prevent crimes, but also to ensure basic human rights for the citizens. While all these secrecy jurisdictions should become more transparent and the world should do a lot in terms of countermeasures and sanctions and pressure to make all of these major financial centers and secrecy jurisdictions to become more transparent, there are still some things that countries can do to protect themselves. In other words, secrecy jurisdictions are a problem and they should become more transparent. However, each country has their own rules and tools to prevent some of the base erosion and profit shifting, and also to prevent some of the secrecy that is being created abroad to have consequences in their own countries. For example, countries could start requiring beneficial ownership registration for any company that operates or own assets in the country. Not many countries are doing this. At the same time, countries could start requiring ownership information to be published about real estate or free ports where high valuables are stored. Other things that countries could do is start joining the different frameworks to exchange information either automatically or upon request. Lastly, it would be very important for countries to start requiring public country by country reporting to identify cases of tax abuse by multinationals, or at least to implement robust local filing to ensure that they will get access to these very relevant tools to tackle tax abuse one way or another, not only by the means authorized or required or allowed by the OECD, but also by other means in order to ensure access to this very relevant information. It seems pretty huge to me that no Latin American country publishes any country by country reporting information. Uh, what does this mean is happening there in literal terms? What should they be doing and what results would that bring? The country by country report is a vital tool to tackle tax abuse by multinationals. Unfortunately, no country in Latin America is requiring this country by country report to be published and to be publicly accessible. These reports contain no confidential information, but only data about global data about each country where a multinational has operations, the number of employees they have there, the income in those countries, the tax paid, etc. This information is clearly not confidential because some countries are already required to publish this information for some sectors, like the banking sector or the extractive sector in the EU. At the same time, some multinationals themselves are offering to publish this information. 
showing that it contains no confidential issue or data, but rather data and, and information that is very relevant for everyone else. In Latin America, not only is the country by country report not public, but some authorities are even rejecting and refusing to obtain this country by country from other countries, ensuring secrecy and refusing to obtain this vital tool to tackle tax abuse by multinationals. Thanks for listening. You can read more on the methodology and results along with plenty of other data on www.financialsecrecyindex.com.